Getting too hot in there. That's better. I don't know what this sounds like, but uh, getting a lot of wind noise at the minute, you know. I hope it's sounding alright in there. Stretching the legs, having a five minute air bit more to run there. I'll paint that other cafe out, the other bike of cafe as we go back. And show you that one. Yeah, not really keen about the setup at that one. Route 59. Nice people. Nice brew. 140 for the coffee, about late in it that. Bacon, sausage, toast, out you want that way, beans, out you want, a uh, couple of cupcakes, you know, if you wanted a piece of cake cut in off, a couple of chockey bars, Mars bar, marathon and Kit Kat, pop, crisps I think, a couple of tables outside, uh, otherwise you sit on wall. Well, it's no different than any other really. It's like they chip that road up there. Anyway, yeah, we've been, you've been with me, you've been to the Route 59 cafe now. What time are we on now? Half one. And I will say this, Eugene, my banana was in one piece, fully intact, unbruised, no black, no soggy ends, bang on. Sprocket, 10 out of 10 for the banana protector. Happy with that. We'll be using that one again. I 
and the other thing to get to the route 59 gap you've got to use the route uh, you know the A59 and uh, it's a nice twisty shorter road you know it's all right but it's not the A roads as you know aren't my favorite roads I'm just it's just not for me these roads as I said before in a couple of vlogs you got to have these roads means to an end you got to get there so these are roads you got to go on to get to the destination you want to be at Skipton Castle um, Sprocket goes there at weekend sometimes with her mother and she says there's a lot of charity shops uh, in Skipton now not was out wrong with charity shops but uh, we, this is that big boy that was a buzzard common buzzard that another one there see it I hope you saw it that was nice to see oh I hope we got them YouTube I do hope we got them on video I have a couple of security cameras up outside the house with lights and uh, obviously once something activates the lights the camera comes on and every now and again I don't do it all the time but uh, I pay so much a month to somebody or other ring and uh, all the video is kept on a must be a massive hard drive somewhere in America and you can look back on every activation so we're looking back I, I just I don't look back on there because there's that many with people driving up and down it picks everything up but uh, I look back on the early morning ones you know after 12 o'clock and before like six o'clock if you will in the morning and an activation the other morning I was just looking back and it was a hedgehog little hedgehog was walking past does your heart good done it well it does my heart good When we first moved up there, there were all sorts coming down Avenue, Hairs and Hedgehog, we had Hedgehog, they all walked with the place. 20... 24 years ago, next, this year, this year, 24 years ago, this year. Another Africa twin. 24 years ago this year. What happened? 24 years ago this year. And in that 24 year, the wildlife has got gradually less. You still see in the avenue, we're getting to feel it's still this deer, you know, you still see deer, I watched it the other day. And I've seen fox and badger. Uh, with the park ranger job I had, I had a guy who worked as a park ranger, unfortunately he's dead now, I might have told you about him, Bob Wilson. Good mate of mine at the time, Bob. I had a lot of time for Bobby, he was a man's man, never, never suffered fools. What you saw is what you get, hard as nails. A proper man's man. Well he had a fox, he, he, he had it from uh, being a, a 
the pump, you know, a young one. And he'd read it called Tag. Tag the Fox. And Bobby used to take it out in school, did the talks on it. And at one time I got a Kestrel. <laughs> I got about that like this year, Kestrel. He'd been poisoned and I got it and I, I got it, I drove home with one hand. I don't know where the hell I did it. I had Kestrel it till the hand and I built it and Avery in backyard. Sprocket weren't best place. It went even further down though because uh, as I, I got it going, you know, I got it survived. And as I was getting it better, I was struggling for food to feed it because I wanted to keep it live. I didn't want to, I wanted to release it. Once I got it sorted, I wanted to release it back into the wild. So, as freezer were getting emptied, I sort of like kept it empty. <coughs> and, I, and then I, one day I filled it full of uh, frozen rats, dead rats. <laughs> Little baby rats, from pet shop. I bought a load of rats, <laughs> and it was coming up Christmas. And Sprocket says, "Come on, then, just get some of that stuff out of the freezer." I said, "I can't." So what do you mean you can't? I said, "It's for bird." So what do you mean it's for bird? I said, "It's all for bird." So get get it out. What is it? What's in that freezer? <laughs> right next to a chicken and pork shop. <laughs> What's in that freezer? I said the dead rats. <laughs> oh, Sprocket went absolutely here. She threw a right wobbler. Oh dear, what am I like? What am I like? Yeah. But uh, when Sprocket went to bed at night, because we had kids then, she used to go to bed early because she was knackered. I used to go and get guests for late at Cage, because we only lived in a two, two down then, a little kitchen up then, you know, Terry types. And uh, <coughs> when she went to bed early at night, I used to go and get guests for and only place I could fly were down stairs stairs steps you know down steps stairs because it had the height and the the length I couldn't let it go outside because it weren't fit enough it had flown up onto the roof or something I couldn't have got it back so it would have snuffed it so it's a flight down the stairs when you're in bed at night but the only thing is when it touched the walls with its wings it left all black lines because <laughs> stairs were wet, the <laughs> stairs were painted white. <laughs> and after a while, <laughs> Sprocket says, Have you seen the stairs? I said, No, what do you mean? Of course I had, like, I knew what you were talking about, I knew what was coming. I said, No, why? What's the what's matter? She says, There's all like black streaky lines coming on the wall down the stairs. Is this, sir? I said, she said, yeah, I said, she said, what do you think they are? I said, I haven't got a clue. I said, I can't think how they've got there. I said, that is strange. <laughs> of course, eventually I came clean. So that was another uh, rollicking. To go along with the rest of the rollicking. Hey, that woman stuck with me. I'll never know, you know, stuff I've done. But, but what, and one, one year it was, uh, I had this, we used to have a big freezer as well as the, the kitchen freezer. And I had the idea this year to sort out wildlife. I thought I'd go and get all the acorns I could, any berries I could, collect as many as I could, freeze them, and then bring them back out in the depths of winter for the animals, you know, for the wildlife in the parks. So I filled the freezers. 
course when it comes Christmas again like Sprocket says you need to get some of that so what is in that stuff we need some room for it, uh, Christmas stuff what's in there I see it bits and bats so what's what got Kestrel gone back I'll tell you I've got to tell you about Kestrel I'll tell you in I'll tell you Kestrel tell first so anyhow I eventually get this here Kestrel up and running and it's more or less back to full health flying perfect and once one morning I got up it was a summer's morning about four o'clock just coming light went a cloudy sky and I got it from up near a park called Townley Park on Todmorden Road the bird when I picked it up I think it had been poisoned getting something off a field you know farmer's field and uh, maybe rodent uh, dead dead mouse or something that had been poisoned and it actually got poisoned itself plus it had hurt its wing a bit and I think that's through poison though coming down and I got it right and I took it out back up down there and by this time it's about half four quarter to five it was really warm one of them balmy summer nights summer mornings where heat never left from the day before and I get Kestrel out at cage and I let it go and you should have heard it squealing absolutely oh I'm not kidding you just for that minute it was fantastic to know that I'd assisted something back to health and, and released it back into wild and it was still wild I never got it tame I kept it wild uh, it, it flew all the way field and landed in a tree nearby where I was stood and it was like screaming, you know, not screaming bad, but you could tell it weren't in pain or out. But it was, I think it was excited at being free. It was back free again. So yeah, that, I was suited with that. Yeah, one of the, a good moment, a good moment that. A good moment. Yeah. Yeah, so going back to the uh, the freezers, I filled all the freezers with acorns and everything for winter for birds to bring them out like in January, January, February. I never thought about Christmas. By then we had three kids. <laughs> three kids. No room in freezer for eight for Christmas. <laughs> that way, that way another. Uh, argument where I've got a, got a right roll again for that one yes Sprockets had a bit to put this is where that cafe is that motorcyclist cafe I don't think it I think it's called pit stop the few bikes there now oh Dick Turpins sounds like pit stop doesn't it Dick Turpin where it's a far off I stop there he's he's a biker the guy who has the cafe is a biker uh, I've had a couple of brews with him there. When he's not busy, he's up for a natter. Not that I do a lot of nattering, of course. <coughs> but it's always uh, good to know you can meet somebody for a natter. Yeah, I've took a few things home from work to uh, get right. Yeah. Oh, going back to Bob, Bob Wilson, yeah. He got this fox. And it was a dog fox called Tag. Reared it from, it was too young really, he went to the vet and he got some sort of milk off the vet that he could feed it, I can't remember what it were, but he did a, did a trade with vet. Vet had never had a fox in, and, uh, but he said, can I have x ray it? He said, you can do what you want with as long as it comes back in good condition and I get some, you know, some food to keep it going. So the vet did the deal and obviously he got all the x-rays he needed for his profession and uh, Bob got the fox up and running and he used to take it to school for a time or two I used to hold this fox gold, gold tag and if you've ever held a dog fox you will never ever forget the smell it stays with you for the rest of your life they have this musk and once you've had that musk on your body you can, I can smell a fox 
anywhere where it's been and you might find that ridiculously stupidly stupid comment but any, anybody out there who watches this channel who's, who's actually held a, a dog fox and they smelt that musk they'll know exactly what I mean if a fox has been out anywhere and marked anybody who knows that musk smell will know I, I can go down where we live every morning with dogs and I can tell you within a couple of minutes if there's been a fox about and as I say anybody who's dealt with a dog fox will know exactly what I'm talking about yeah but Bob Bob were a case we were a case with Bob Good lad, I miss him. I miss Bob. You know, as you get older and you go to a funeral, when you're young and you go to a funeral, you you feel a bit upset. If that's a word, upset. Maybe. Um, but when you get older. You think you get harder, wouldn't you? But it seems to amplify. And I went with a good, another good mate of mine, Derek Garside. He said, "Derek, he's he was another good lad with Derek. A lot older than me, uh, but he was a biker in his youth, and I think he was 70 or something like that, 75. And he promised his grandson he'd turn up on a bike on his on his grandson's." 16th or something like that it were 21st obviously he didn't have a bike could have been his, could have been 80 something like that and I had a 125 at the time that I got sprocket because sprocket showed interest in, in, in having to do it biking and having her own bike so I got her this uh, what would it call in fact Graham got it at finish Graham Carlisle he went to Scotland mate what were it called? It would take on a 125 CG. Pulse. Come on mate, stop watching her, her backside and get your brain in gear. Pulse. Kimco. This is that 60 mile an hour uh, average B camera. Yeah, Kimco. And uh, she's riding in in, in Badium on, on it, she back went and passed a CBT and she was down in Padium and uh, she came off it and dropped the bike <laughs> you're only a slow speed dog well that was Sprocket done, she wouldn't go back on it after that she'd had enough so I sold it to my good friend Graham who you've been introduced to, Mr Carlisle the cool half back you know what I mean? That field there, the one to my left, is full, and I mean full, the full length of the field with solar panels. Solar panels. Have they chipped this road? They can't, they haven't got to chip this road. Surely they haven't chipped this road. They haven't chipped it where I am. be able to overtake him with ease because I've got a few miles in hand because we've only been going oh look at that what's the chances of two cars being that with the port that you can't get round we're round now I saw Bob a car Bob Wilson Love it, love it, love it, love it. Slow down, Stephen. I saw Bob a car. Well, when I saw Bob moving out to eight cars, he just knew. In fact, we I learned him to drive. Getting through his death. Getting through his death. When he passed his test, he wanted me car, so I sold it him. He got it cheap. 
being made like that. But uh, what I didn't realise was, hey, look at that. Also then, what I didn't realise was that also uh, at some somewhere along the line, I can't remember see it, saying it, and I, I'm sure I didn't say it. 100% certain I didn't say it but uh, I got the job of servicing it every year <laughs> free free <laughs> that were Bob oh he call me Morphe Morphe can't get more and more working too much wrong too much wrong with engine more whoa Whoops, a daisy young lady. I should have shook my head, shouldn't I? I should have shook my head. Uh, so I think car, Bob, pop it up. Next next minute, Bob's at door. Blow more. Drop it off, Bob. Give it a shout, I'll give you a shout when it's done. You want them to shoot you right at fit. Oh, my foot wrong floor then. Scraped on my boot. He won them out at fit, you know, and he chewed tobacco. We I really love them at all. He chewed tobacco. Come on, slow down. And you were in the house, and Sprocket used to be looking at it. <laughs> and he'd be chewing, sat on the chair, looking for somewhere to spit. <laughs> and I'm looking at Bob, shaking my head, no Bob, no, don't do it Bob. <laughs> uh, time or two I'd pick, take him home at night. Pick him up on Wayne, before he got caught. And all inside my car, passenger seat, all his brain marks. <laughs> Sprocky used to say, what, what are them staying? It was Bob when he was trying to spit out the window. <laughs> uh, good old Bob. Good lad, good lad. Missed. He's sadly missed. He had a grandchild named after him, he called Robert obviously Bob, and he had a grandchild named after him, Robert. Mrs Muriel, I think she died, you know, a year or so after Bob. I suppose in life we've all got mates like that. <laughs> They're a character though. Character. Well, we're coming back down to Butterford now, guys. Down, you can get to Dainham that way. We went to the day, Dainham. These are, that's what I'm saying, all these roads. That's roughly, you went to roughly. All these roads interlink. Mad, isn't it? Well, it's not mad, but it's what you, you know. You think you're miles from somewhere, and you're not. That happened to us at Scarborough, me and Sprocket, when we took kids, when they were. The only tots. In fact, I think the first time we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have old Becky. Yeah? I think it was just two lads. And if you're familiar with Scarborough, you walk right round there, it's miles. We used to walk every morning right round there to the shops, then right round there and back. I mean, it weren't a, weren't a bother because we didn't have all that much uh, cash. And it's you know he spent all day doing that's what we that's that's where mine and Sprocket's day. 
kids to port, you know, and then we go for a walk and we tire them out. And yeah, we're in this B and B, uh, and get them back at night. Oh, tired, get him to bed and B&B &B had a little bar and struck it and I went down and had a couple of drinks. A lot of Scottish people in that year. And uh, we had some fun with him. Yeah, going back to the tail. But uh, it would end at week. We've been going all the way around this bait at shops every day. Miles and miles. It took us ages. And I said, Sister Brock, I don't know what's right back here. It won't be a P's own port for you, I you know it. The B&B uh, &B was just right corner from P's own park. Go up a right steep hill. And there are all B&Bs. &B. You could see right over at sea. Off this, like, top of hill. And I said, Sister Brock, I don't know what's right back here. We'll go down back here and just have a look. See what's right back. We'd only been going five minutes, we went to the end of town. The time where we were, we were there and the front went like a massive horseshoe like that. Then back there. So we walked from there to there, we were in town. <laughs> and every day we'd gone from there all the way down to the town and all the way back. If you know what I mean, if you get in that picture. Right. Boarding house B and B there all the way around the front, all the way around to the town all the way back around the front to the B&B when we, all we had to do was go from there A to B there <laughs> so that were linked, you know, that's what I'm saying you don't realise how near you are to something because of these little subsidiary roads that link each everything up going into Barraford now I'll just uh, show you a nice little, I've never been in it, me and Sprocket keep talking about coming because it's just, just where we live, it's just a couple of miles down the road, it looks right inviting this uh, cafe, bar, pub, whatever they call it, whatever it is, and it's just down here, hey look at that man, spot. Got a booths, supermarket, massive park over to the left there, you cross over the river on a bridge, back there, playground, lots of people come to Barraford, village it out, that's your booths. Couple of pubs, little pubs, one there, bankers, it was a bank, a uh, big pub there. Riverside Deli, vegan and vegetarian. That's the playground. Ah, oh, there's somebody letting their pub here, there, way there. That's another pub. They all like these took over banks and things like that, aren't they? It's here now, we're coming up to it. You see some people sat under a veranda and it opens up, all the doors open up to, you know, it's there. Looks right inviting. Air ambulance charity shop. That uh, Route 59 there was selling t shirts. Well, I think it was uh, Route 59 cafe on it, black with a uh, motive. And it says all proceeds go to air ambulance. £10 for t shirt. There's a bit of a meet and here that I am course. I went on. Over at Preston. You you know the certificate you get sent. You get it you I've joined the I am branch. It's tenor. And you get you get a few things on the night. I I, I will I will go I'll text Brocket. And what it's like a presentation now, they give you the, uh, even though I've got it, the, um, 
certificate. You take it back and they uh, they give it you, give it your back <laughs> in the presentation evening. But you get uh, a few uh, freebies. We you get a eight smart uh, yellow vest to wear on the night. Uh, you yeah, don't get to wear on the night, but you get this here yellow vest. Whether you know it's it's a good and it's. Uh, Got the eye and badge on. As you can see, it's not something I wear at the moment, but it's something that started to. I started to think about the more I ride. I've never, I'd never, you know, I've never been one fan of a white helmet, and certainly not a fluoro. But. That uh, Shark Evo 1 2. <laughs> That's the name of it, honest. Shark Evo 1 2. That is the name of the helmet. And they do it in a white, solid white it's called. They also do it in a fluoro, fluoro but somebody's had the fluoro and they said don't get it. I wouldn't get it, I don't think, but somebody's had it and because it's been out in the sun it's like all different colours, if you will as if it's bleached in places and faded so I wouldn't go for that purely for that but I don't know if I've gone that far yet but I am seriously considering a white helmet but they do a right nice white red it's mainly white as I can't remember the name white mainly white it's got red and black on it which would match the Africa Twin it would also match the 250 CRF 250L so and they're coming down in price as I said they were £400 these helmets but you can pick them up now there's a firm in Holland doing them shipping them over to Britain for about 214 up. But the one I've seen, the, you know, the one I've just mentioned, is slightly dearer. Call me tight, call me whatever you want, but I was just waiting to see if it dropped in price. Sprocket said, just get it, get it, that's when you want, get it. Because as I said, I've sold my other RI for 285, well, 270 pound, I think it was 268 pound I got for it, eBay. So I did well, I, was, I was really chuffed on that, even though the helmet was in good condition, no marks, no scratches or anything. It were a 2010 helmet, so it's nine year old. The guy who bought it knew, but I didn't pull no wool over anybody's eyes. The age was on it, in fact it's stamped on the helmet. Uh, it did have a brand new uh, visor with it which I purchased, they were £60 then and I got it from Rocket Centre when it was shutting down for 20 notes so I included that but so I, well, I'm, my point is I've got that money to buy the next helmet that's what, that's my point, it's not going to cost any I'm not not going out and just buying an helmet the money's there, the, I've got the money off the helmet that I've sold So it's, I think it's always good to have two helmets and especially one that I'm thinking again in the flip front we haven't had the summer yet but I'm sure it'll come in so unless anybody any of you have any experience in the shark Evo 1 2 I'll be happy to know one of the subscribers I, I, I watch he has a shark Eveline or Eveline well, he and he likes it, said it's very noisy but he bought it for the flip front, he likes to ride with the front up the shark is one of those that are, you can legally ride there's some you can't legally ride with, some you can and I believe, I'm not right sure but I believe if it locks up you can ride with it legally if it doesn't lock when you flip the front up then you can't ride with it legally but don't quote me on that I could be wrong it's just something that's sticking in my mind that I've read it somewhere 
probably haven't you know me by now guys anybody who's watched me for any length of time it's quite possible I've just told you a load of bunking <laughs> there's loads of little it's that guide lane there's loads of little lanes up just up there we'll have a look one day and then again they all link into each other there's a road through Higham here this, this, is, this, this is Higham, they always have village fairs on Scarecrow uh, stuff and musical evening um, they had a Miss Brockett took grandchild to the week like a fun day sort of ferret racing and village hall and we had a coffee and cake in the village hall quite nice so they're always putting summer on they have one of them open garden days you know you go into people's gardens pay so much for the programme and you follow the pro the, there's a map in the programme of whose gardens you can go to and the money goes to charity so we've been to that and there's a pub in the in, in the in the in the centre, it's called the Four Olds. Four Olds at Iam, and they had a, a proper beer, real ale festival, and that went down right well. I forgot what the Four Olds stand for. The Four Olds. I'm going to come back to you on that one. I used to know that. And it, it's so. Oh, It'll go, I'll, I'll put, come back to you on that one YouTube, I'll do a bit of research. It's comical. So that, that's where police stop. Not police, speed camera. And they shoot the camera right up to that bend we just come round. Again, I ain't got a problem with it being there because you've been in a 50 for some time, both ways. So unfortunately, if you come round that corner hurtling and easy and he gets you, unfortunately on this occasion, then it's your fault. It's one of them where well, I say to you, it, it, that in entrapment, that's not entrapment, you've been in 50 for quite a couple of miles, either way. And if you get caught doing then, then, then that's, unfortunately that's that's your down to yourself as opposed to the other ones I point out where I do totally believe and stand by that is entrapment and they're not doing the cell no favours and gaining any not that they want to gain any support but they're not doing the cell no favours and they're gaining no support in the areas that I've pointed out before in my opinion, of course. Okay then, YouTube. I'm knocking it off here because I'm almost home. Back into my hometown of Paddyham. So, YouTube, once again, I shall say adios. Thank you for coming with me today. I hope you find something to enjoy. I know I'll go on a bit and natter, but we've been to the route 59 that's something different so adios from me youtube and thanks for riding with morphy once again thank you to all my subscribers oh on the note of subscribers i've lost one i'm down to 70 from 71 not good hey ho it's one of them adios youtube bye for now